one thing that I've been doing, and I think a lot of us have been doing in this pandemic, is to watch a lot of TV. Well, I happened to notice that PBS had the uh, the portrayal of our former governor, Ann Richards, on in a special uh, one-woman performance by Holland Taylor this summer. And I, while I was watching that, I thought I, sh I should tell some of these funny stories at our, uh, at our meeting. So I'm, I'm going to start this one with a, a real short one here, uh, showcasing Ann Richards' wit. And of course, the fact that it was on PBS meant I was supposed to learn something, right? So I did learn something. I learned that George Washington was not originally from the East Coast. He was originally from Texas, Central Texas, as a matter of fact. And, uh, you know, that's where the origin of his tree chopping down story comes from. Uh, huh. George, George's father came home one evening and found out that George had chopped down the only mesquite tree within 30 miles of their ranch. And he says, George, did you chop down that tree? And of course, we all know what George said. He said, Father, I cannot tell a lie. I did chop down that tree. Well, his father hung his head and said, well, of course, you know, now this means we've got to move to Virginia. And George says, why? And he says, well, if you can't tell a lie, you're not going to make anything in Texas politics. <laughs> that, that's no aspersion on our friends in the legislature. It's just a joke, folks. <laughs> okay, the first item on our agenda is the reading of the minutes, which I would prefer to waive unless anybody wants to hear what we were up to back in March. So if anybody says, please read them, I'll read them. If not, we'll move ahead. I hear no objections. So we will file our meeting records in, the, or our, our meeting minutes in the records. I'm trying to shuffle all my paperwork here get the meeting minutes out of the way and give you an update on uh, our annual meeting. We had a, a rather exciting thing happen during the annual meeting. I'm sure some of you were there, but uh, after our June meeting that was canceled here, our uh, executive committee got together and we agreed to take the savings we had from missing that June meeting uh, and lump it together with our usual impact donation. So we were able to pledge $1,000 towards mailing a printed solicitation letter that would go out to all uh, retirees. Well, at the annual meeting, you know, we usually have the pass the hat feature, but we couldn't do that since the annual meeting also was online. But we encouraged everybody to go to the TPA website as we are encouraging you now and donate to impact electronically. Well, while that was going on, one of our generous but anonymous members issued a challenge where he said he would match up to $300, anything anybody wanted to give to the mailing of, of that solicitation letter. And we got $350 in pledges. So that was matched uh, at, for another 300. And we added though that $650 to the thousand that we gave, and we have $1,600, $1,650 for the solicitation letter. We had already determined that the estimated cost of that letter would be about $1,576. So with the retirees donation and the matching challenge, we were able to exceed the estimate and fully fund the solicitation letter, which is now being drafted and TPA is in the process of having our mailing list updated with ERS, and we plan to send this letter out to the new expanded mailing list in early October, and that should give us plenty of time to help our friends when the November general election rolls around. Also, the executive committee has been busy in these times when we've either had no meetings or had online meetings. We approved reaching out to a wider range of our members via email 
to find a treasurer's candidate. TPA supplied me with an update uh, mailing list that had uh, more names from a, a wider Austin area uh, that I could send email to and see if we could get somebody to uh, volunteer to be our next treasurer. But then I, I put that uh, on hold after we had a candidate step forward. We'll discuss that a little later on. And of course, we're making this outreach today and uh, hopefully bringing in more people who will be willing to help us out and become active with our chapter. We also approved this online meeting, which is in response to COVID restrictions on in-person gatherings. And uh, fortunately, we had the offer from our friends at uh, the association member benefits to uh, volunteer to host this, and we appreciate them for that. And we discussed the Christmas luncheon. You know, it's unclear whether or not we're going to be out from under these restrictions come early December. And there's a lot of planning that needs to precede that meeting, but everybody wants to not call it yet. We want to wait and see what the pandemic situation is later before making that decision. One suggestion I had is that we wait until early November before deciding. And it works out if we wait for the general election to be over, but do it before November 11th. That's one month before the date of the luncheon, which would be December 11th if we have it. That gives us two full weeks before Thanksgiving and two weeks after for planning and preparation. So that might be the good time to make the decision sometime between election day and veterans day. We'll discuss that in a little more detail a little later on. But right now I want to introduce Ray Hamel and he's here to present his legislative report. Thank you, Dan. Uh, at its August meeting of the board, TPEA adopted a legislative agenda for the coming legislative session, which you may recall begins in January and goes on for 140 days. Now, over the overarching uh, theme right now is, will the legislature even meet in person, number one? And number two, if they do, will they adopt an annual budget or a biennial budget? Because in addition to the, all the uncertainty surrounding the epidemic, the pandemic, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty about the state's revenue situation. However, uh, there have been some, some hopeful signs lately, and I'll get into that in a minute. But the legislative agenda that the board adopted put a, uh, an emphasis on seeking additional pension funding. That is, um, the ERS fund is, whether you want to say it's underwater or it's in distress, uh, both would be accurate statements right now. Uh, for example, uh, every biennium right now that we see the current funding levels and see the current investment returns uh, result in uh, the unfunded liability increasing by over a billion dollars, a billion and a half probably. And uh, in the short term, uh, one example is that during the, this past summer, um, the, the fund received 114 million in contributions while paying out over 220 million in pension payments. And the result of all this is, without getting into the actuarial weeds, is that the fund could, according to the actuaries, run out of money by 2061. Now, for some of you, that may seem a far, far piece away, but for those who are still employed, it is, of course, of, uh, of great concern. And frankly, remember, if, you, if your surviving spouse receives an annuity, he or she may get to that point where that's, that's looming, a looming reality. So we are putting a, an emphasis on working with ERS to communicate with the legislature that uh, for various reasons, both from the bond perspective and from the perspective of, of the need to preserve the pension fund, that there be an increase in the legislature's level of funding. And last session, the House had put in 150 million in additional monies. Uh, just 150 million out of billions. And, and that, according to the actuary, was enough to get us moving towards actuarial soundness for the fund. But the, uh, the reality is that, uh, that it was all about TRS last session. 
and they got any extra money laying around uh, went to TRS. So what, what uh, the Senate Finance Committee has come out with a recommendation this summer that basically says that we ought to do as a state for ERS what was done for TRS last session and that that would, one, help us with our credit rating as a state, and number two, of course, uh, give greater security to the retirement fund, retirements uh, and pensions of so many state employees and retirees. So that we're, we're somewhat hopeful that that can happen, but at the very least, at the very least, we are pushing for the legislature to adopt a plan and put it into statute that would move the pension fund towards a greater, a better funding status, put it on more solid ground. Meanwhile, the, the insurance program is on solid ground and it's, uh, the reserve fund is rather robust. It, one of the ironies of this COVID phenomenon has been that people have not been able to get into the doctor as often or haven't gone to the doctor as often. And there certainly have not been what are called non-essential services. So the claims have gone down somewhat. And the, uh, and, the, and the fund is, the insurance fund, is doing even better than the actuaries had anticipated. So uh, the reserve fund grows, and the ERS has been able to maintain the health select, the main insurance plan's premiums at current levels. Uh, that is for those in the health select plan, those retirees who are, who are you know, under Medicare eligible age. For those of you who have Medicare retirement, for those of you 65 and over, whether you're, you're the spouse or the, the uh, retiree, uh, ERS, as you may have heard, and you're gonna hear a lot more about this, move to a different provider uh, and move from Humana, by competitive bidding, chose United over Humana to administer the health plan. And in, in doing so, they realized uh, hundreds of millions in savings and, and are able to apply that to the premiums and an ongoing concern for TPEA for the last decade, thanks in part to Ted Miller, has been to bring attention to the fact that surviving spouses are hit with a very, very high premium increase uh, upon the decease of their, of their primary uh, insurance recipient, their retiree. Um, so we are seeing, ERS is saying that premiums for surviving spouses are going to go down by $130 or thereabouts every month, decrease $130 a month. And for a retiree carrying a spouse uh, on their insurance right now, a retiree carrying a spouse will see about a $60 a month decrease. And this is really good news. So what we propose to do is to emphasize the good job ERS has done with the insurance and ask that the legislature simply allow them to continue getting the current amount of money. But as you may remember, every two years, every budget cycle, they start from scratch. Insurance is not a guarantee past any two years. So we want to make sure that the legislature understands that it's a well-run program, they have employed competitive bidding, and we, we hope that uh, going forward, they'll continue at the current level of funding. Now with respect to pay raises, and with respect to 13 checks, uh, as I said, the great uncertainty about the revenues, in fact, the, the, you saw the state cut by all agency budgets, except for ERS and, and TRS, by about 5%. So this year, this, this current year, so we're, we're uh, thinking that there will not be extra monies in, uh, allowing them to put a boatload of money into the pension fund, certainly, and we don't think there's enough money in the, in the budget, in the, certainly in the immediate future for there to be across the board pay raise. And we're just being realistic and we're trying to be very forthcoming with everyone about that. So we are uh, saying that we will work with the legislature to find opportunities for targeted pay raises uh, in, in high need areas. So uh, that's what we'll be working on. The meanwhile, what we may be doing is asking you during the session, uh, when you may not be able to get in in person to see a legislator, uh, to, to tech, to contact your legislative office by email or by phone call or by letter. And uh, we ask you to sign up for text alerts by texting the word TPEA to 313131. Again, text the word 
TPEA, as you see on the screen, to 313131. And that puts you on a list where we can, if we need you to contact a le your legislative office in short order because a bill is up that is uh, very uh, inviting or very threatening, or because it's a funding issue, then we, we can contact you and you can uh, immediately contact your legislative office. Also submit to TPEA, make sure you've submitted your home email address. Your home email address, that's especially important for employees who cannot, who are not allowed to use their work email to send communiques to legislative offices about uh, in matters of interest like, uh, like this. Uh, know who represents you. You can go to the Texas legislature online and you can uh, look, go to that website you see there. Uh, well, you don't see that. FYI, you can go to Texas legislature online and you'll see an opportunity there to find out who represents you, to be very clear on who your senator is and who your state representative is. And, and of course, we may ask you to write a letter or at least, at least an email, but we found a one-page letter, whether handwritten or typed, is very much more effective than emails now in this new generation where spam emails have gone out in huge numbers. Um, so I, we ask you to kind of be alert, be informed, and respond uh, when we ask you to, the few times we may ask you to, during the legislative session to, uh, to try and carry forth our legislative agenda. So thank you, uh, as always, for all you have done and, and for the state. And if you're not a TPEA member, please consider joining. I'm gonna turn you back to Dan on that note. Thank you very much, Ray. Some very good information there. And I hope everybody will sign up to get those texts. We can uh, really make an Im impact that way once the uh, legislature gets to crank in here full stream at the beginning of the year. I mentioned earlier that uh, our meetings literally being brought to us by AMBA, the Association Member Benefits Advisors, our new benefits partners. They have some exciting things on offer for us. And we've brought in, well, actually, John has been here all along, but he's brought us in and we'll bring him in now to tell us uh, what all AMBA's been doing for us and hopes to do for us going forward. John? All right. Thank you, Dan. Good morning, everyone. I appreciate you joining us today. And again, AMBA is proud to partner with the TPEA to provide you with not only benefits, but membership support. My role, and you'll see another gentleman's name, Rick Leininger, our role is to help you grow members. And so whenever we're partnering together with TPEA, whenever we're out in the state offices, out across the great state of Texas, we're preaching your message, the stuff that Ray and, and Ann and the team are doing there at TPEA, as well as the you retiree members as well, what the benefits are for joining TPEA. So we're going to roll through this real quickly and kind of talk about, I want to focus on two main benefits that you have access to. One is part of your membership and it's free. Another is just an, a benefit that uh, we think you should take advantage of, but I want to highlight it because it is part of the impact auction and uh, mention those things there. So again, our number one priority of association membership ben or member benefit advisors is to drive members towards your association. We partner with about 65 retiree and active member associations. Yours is a very unique organization in that it serves both active state employees as well as retired state employees. And so we help partner with the TPEA to drive members your way to help increase your voice, especially as Ray mentioned, this is gonna be a unique legislative session. And uh, we wanna drive as many members your way and help you be stay communicated and strong so that you can get the benefits that you perceive that you need going forward. So who is Association Member Benefit Advisors? We call ourselves AMBA. You may hear our representatives refer to us AMBA. We provide you as association members access to discounts and best-in-class insurance products, ranging from supplemental health programs, travel discounts, lots of retail and technology discounts. Dental and vision is probably what we're most uh, familiar with as far as our membership. Many of you, as you know, when you retire from your state employment, dental and vision doesn't come with your retiree benefits. We provide those benefits or make those benefits available to you as a member at group rates, just like you enjoyed beforehand, before you retired. We do that for retiree benefits now, as well as life insurance and other benefits as well. 
quickly on the left hand side of the screen you see all of the plans that TPEA has endorsed. Our role out there from the advantages of having the AMBA as well as TPEA combined together, we can fill those gaps that you don't have covered. I heard someone mentioning earlier on the call talking about having knee replacement surgery, different things like that. With the benefit providers that you have now as retirees, certain things are covered, certain things are not covered. We have pro products and programs that are available for you that can cover some of those gaps with the hospital stays, things like that. As you know, whenever you left state employment or if you're still an employee, benefits being able to be portable and take them with you are a big deal. These benefits that you have access to through TPEA and AMBA are portable. The other thing is you can extend these benefits to your family members, whether they're surviving parents or whether they're children and their family that don't have certain benefits, you can extend those benefits to them who may not be eligible for other benefits or your retiree benefits. One thing that we get the most question about is home health care, long-term care insurance. Those things are biggies that a lot of folks have questions about. And this can also prevent you from having to take off time if you're, you're working, things like that, uh, extended time for loved ones. I do want to hit on two very important benefits. The first benefit is because we are scattered all across the great state of Texas, there are lots and lots of places that aren't covered by level one trauma centers. And if you get into an accident, have a heart attack, something like that, an ambulance or an air ambulance taking you to a hospital can be astronomical in cost. We were visiting earlier with someone who'd worked uh, for ERS for many, many years and said, even in the city of Austin, there were 36 ambulance providers and not a single one of them was on the ERS medical plan. And so what that means is that those prices are unregulated in regards to how they um, can charge you for a, a, a bill. So if you see here, even just a ground ambulance can run you in the thousands of dollars, much less an air ambulance can cost you in the tens of thousands of dollars. Get out in the hill country, something happened, you have to be flown back to Austin or San Antonio. Those can, things can be quite expensive. And so one of the benefits that we have available is what is called the massive program. It's a medical air services association program. It is a membership program, which we can offer at greatly reduced group rates. It is not an insurance program. So regardless of your health condition, everyone is eligible for this purchase, for this product. And this product provides you ambulance services and beyond 24-7, 365, anywhere in the world. Air ambulance to get you and your family back home off of a cruise if somebody gets sick. Uh, if you have an accident or have a heart attack, something like that, please make sure that you have this available to you. You do need to purchase this. We can talk about it later. But I want to point it out because the impact auction, we're going to highlight that here in a little bit. We've donated two of these to the impact auction. And usually it runs around $400 a year for a, a, a couple. But you can start the bid, I think, at $200 on this. So you can get this for half price for a year. It is a great service that you can hop in and pick up for a good price or bid it up and also support impact as you go forward. The other thing I wanna do, and please grab a pen. This is a benefit that you get right now for being a TPEA member. This is something that you have because you're a TPEA member, because you're paying your membership dues as a retiree, or even if you're an active employee paying your membership dues, you get what is called the AMBA Savers or the Passport Program. It is a discount program that you can use for things that you use every day. It is, has a website that you can go take it down, take advantage of. You can go to myambadiscounts.com, myambadiscounts.com, register with your home email address. Again, if there are any state employees on here, please don't register with your state uh, email address. We wanna make sure we keep this a home email address situation. And they will send you every once in a while an email but the nice thing about it is you can go out there and you can see what is available in your area. You can type in your city, you can type in Austin, Texas, and it will show you all 700 plus offers. Everything from oil changes to restaurants to uh, continuing education programs, shopping discounts, all kinds of things like that. You can sort by category, you can sort by location close to you, you can also include businesses that you want to include as part of this discount program and ask them as well for that. 
So this is on the website. It's myambidiscounts.com. It also has a mobile app. If, you get, if you're comfortable with your Android phone, your iPhone, you can go on to the App Store on Google Play or to the iPhone's uh, App Store, Apple Store, and sign in looking up for the Passport Corporate. When you sign on with either the MyAmba discounts on their website or on the Passport program, you're going to want to type in AMBA Savers. That lets Passport know that you are a TPEA member. When you type in AMBA Savers, it lets them know that you're a TPA member and it unlocks all these discounts for you. It's travel and vacation whenever we can get back out on the road again. It's available for stuff like that. It's also got tons of discounts on shopping and services. It's local, it's national. Some are just online only, stuff all over. So I wanna highlight a couple of those. One, if you're not a member of Sam's or not a member of Costco, and Dan is showing the, uh, the Passport app on his phone right now. If you're not a member of Sam's or Costco, you can sign up through the Passport application, get a significant discount off your first year membership receive gift cards, other discount stuff like that. And so it's really kind of a cool thing that uh, you can do. And right there, that would pay for your retiree associate member, or retiree membership right off the bat, just getting your discount for Sam's or Costco. Also, movie tickets. You want to take your spouse out for a weekend on, on the movies, get on anywhere from 20 to 30% savings off of tickets right off the bat to most of the movie chains. Travel savings across the board, discounts, significant discounts on rent cars, hotels, airfare, things of that nature. If you want to tell the kids, hey, let's go down to South Padre Island for spring break or South Padre Island this fall when everything's cool off just a little bit. There's significant discounts out there as well for travel across the state as well as across the country. If you want to just stay in the state of Texas, go to Houston, San Antonio, the Metroplex, or just stay at home. These are some examples that we put together back in May of just ways that you can save significant amounts of money with your TPEA membership and through the uh, AMBA Savers Passport Program. Again, all of this comes as part of your TPEA membership. There's nothing else that you have to do, nothing you have to pay for. Just whenever you go out there on the website, type in um, AMBA Savers as your discount code that unlocks all of these things for you. One of the biggest discounts that most of the TPA members take advantage of is the T-Mobile discount. You can save significant amount of money on adding new lines. If you sign up for some of their package programs, you can get a significant amount of uh, savings, Visa reward cards, things like that. You'll find out that whenever you go in there on the Passport AMBA Savers website, you'll type in T-Mobile, and it'll sometimes give you a promo code like you see down there on the bottom. You can take that promo code whenever you call to activate your phone number or get you a new line. You can use those promo codes. That's what drives all of the discounts. That's what drives all of the, the bonus cards and things like that that come to you as well. Sometimes Netflix and savings on the actual phones, things of that nature. So this is probably the biggest benefit that TPA members take advantage of. I would highly encourage you if you need cell phone or need cell phone service, or want to save some money on that, use this program for that pro, for that, that situation. All right. So again, going back over, just to wrap up the benefits that you have from TPEA, because TPEA has partnered with AMBA, go to myambadiscounts.com. Myambadiscounts.com. It says here, put your at work email address and warn me. I should have changed this slide as well. Put your home email address. If you're not employed with the state, keep that email address in there. If you're a state employee, put your home email address on there and then type in AMBA Savers, A-M-B-A Savers as your, your um, savings code. And that opens up all of those benefits for you and all the discounts. It's a lot of fun to explore and see what's out there. If you have questions, again, on anything that we've talked about today, you want to ask about the MASA program, you want to talk about home health care, long-term care, things of that nature, you can go to two different places. You can go to amba-review.com slash TPEA. Again, amba-review.com slash TPEA. Or you can email myself or Rick Leiniger down there. John without an H, J-O-N dot green at amba.info or Rick dot at amba.info. 
either way, if you email Rick or I, we can get you in touch with answering any questions for the, somebody that can help you do that. Or if you go to the AMBA dot or slash review dot com slash TPEA, there'll be a little card that you can fill out, put your information in there. Someone will contact you back about any of those services. We are proud to represent and work hand in hand with Ann and Ray and the whole team at TPEA. We want to make your organization even stronger, help double your membership, help secure those benefits that you work so long for the state for. So Dan, I appreciate you uh, letting us have some time on your agenda today. Don't forget, make sure you get entered in the Amazon gift card by putting your name and email address in the chat feature. And then uh, Dan, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you much, John. We are uh, very excited to be partnering with AMBA and look forward to a, a great association moving forward. This uh, meeting today, was totally arranged by John and his team there at AMBA, and we uh, tip our hats greatly to them for giving us this opportunity. And I will reiterate, re reiterate I'll say it again, what he said about uh, getting your name and email in our chat feature here so that we can uh, draw for a couple of gift cards uh, when we come up to the conclusion of today's meeting. I've got 13 people that I see in chat, but we've got almost 20 in the meeting, so a few more to get in there. You'll be working on that as we move forward. And moving forward, it's, uh, it's election time. Well, it's election time everywhere we turn, but it is here in the chapter as well. In odd years, we elect a president, a second vice president, and a secretary. And even though 2020 has proven to be an odd year, numerically it is an even year. So we're looking to uh, elect a first vice president for legislative affairs, a third vice president for programs, and a treasurer. We have had Jim Zakowski as our first vice president for legislation, and he has agreed to run again. Let me just confirm. Are you still with us, Jim? He did have to leave early, but he did tell me that he was, he was wanting to uh, run for that office again. So he'll be our candidate for first vice president and the uh, chairman of the uh, legislative committee. Our third vice president in charge of programs was Julia Johnson, but she is going to run for the treasurer's position. So the third vice president who's in charge of programs, that position is open. And I would right now like to ask if there are any volunteers here in our meeting today who would like to nominate themselves or somebody else for that position. I'll let you think about that for a second while I mention once again, the treasurer's position, which had been held by Ann, uh, and of course she moved into the executive director position of TPEA and that vacated that. But Julia, as I say, who had been our third vice president, uh, it will be uh, standing for the treasurer's office. Okay, anybody want to volunteer for the third vice president's job? Let me just say this, there's not going to be that much for you to do this year if you are elected to that position, because that position is primarily, as I say, focused on our programs and our programs during a uh, legislative session year are all primar primarily revolving around that. So we'll be having Ann and Ray come in and, and tell us what's going on up at the Capitol for our programs throughout most of the year. Hey, Dan, and, this yes. is Anne. I, I volunteer Ray. I thought about Ray last night. Yeah. What do you think, Ray? There's two Rays on the call. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Ray him out. <laughs> <laughs> Ann and I, once again, were in sync. I knew exactly which uh, race you meant. <laughs> how, how can I refuse? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here is our slate of candidates then. We have for first vice president, Jim Zakowski, for third vice president, Ray Hamel, and for treasurer, Julia Johnson. Uh, do I have a motion to accept these nominees for these positions? 
motion so made. And a second. I'll second it. So that was Ted Miller on the motion and uh, Ann Bishop on the second, if I'm correct. Correct. Now in the discussion phase, is there anybody else who would like to run or put somebody up for one of these? Mr. President, uh, I suggest that uh, we accept these nominations and elected by acclamation. That sounds like a motion to me. Do we have a second? I second. Who was that on the second? Tammy Marlowe. Thank you, Tammy. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on our three candidates? No discussion. All in favor of the motion to elect these three candidates by acclamation. Uh, everyone say aye. 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 And aye. anybody opposed, same sign. Hearing no opposition, that motion passes and we have elected our first vice president, Jim Zakowski, our third vice president, uh, Ray Hamel, and our treasurer, I see Anne there wiping her brow, <laughs> <laughs> Julia Johnson. And Julia, I hope she's able to hear us. I know she's having trouble connecting on the call, but we'll let her know and, and give her our congratulations. <laughs> and I'm sure she and Anne will be together on getting the books straight. So let's see, that brings us to unfinished business. And I promised you earlier, we would talk about uh, the Christmas luncheon. Mr. President. Yes, I would, sir. I would like the opportunity if it's uh, appropriate after we finish that discussion and we have the time. I have a couple of concerns that I would like to put out on the floor and uh, not for necessarily any discussion or resolution today, but uh, just for everybody's thinking about and perhaps we can address them at a later time. Very good, Ted, go ahead. Oh, well, okay. Uh, <clears throat> first one, uh, I have not been on the TPA website members section lately, but all of the information and the, the good, uh, just, uh, displays we had on screen today, uh, I hope that they will be on the benefits section under uh, members so that uh, we don't have to try to remember all that stuff. I wrote down as much as I could, but uh, then following it through after it gets cold in my mind it might be another issue. So that's the first one. The second issue is and Ray or maybe Ann can uh, fill us in on this later. Uh, my concern about the funding for the health care seems to me like in my memory, I remember that there was one session where we were doing very well as a uh, result of the work that Ann did in reducing the cost of health care and the legislature in its wisdom thought that was so great that they didn't need to uh, continue the same amount, level of funding. Consequently, they uh, <clears throat> basically cut uh, the savings that Ann had accumulated uh, out of the funding and used it elsewhere in uh, the appropriations bill. I would have no problem with that if that were to go into the retirement fund. But it's a concern that uh, if my memory serves me correctly, that uh, we at least ought to be thinking about. And the last issue is in talking about uh, written communications, either by text and or email or uh, hard copy letter to legislators, one of the advantages that a retiree has is they're no longer uh, intimidated by regulations by their agency and 
talking with their legislator and discussing issues that affect them. And one of the reasons that uh, TRS has done so well is because teachers actually either know some of these legislators uh, because they grew up with them in small towns or they're mm -hmm. teaching their children and they have no restrictions or feeling of restriction in discussing issues with them. And we, we retirees could uh, utilize that strategy, I think, very effectively. Yet, uh, as retirees and former state employees, we might need some uh, training and or a little uh, handbook of if you go in to see your legislator or their chief of staff, uh, here's things that you ought to be concerned about and how you should address them. Something of that nature. I've talked with Ann and Ray about this before, and I think we have a unique opportunity to reach our legislators in their home district so that they know that somebody is keeping up with what they're doing and get some commitments for taking care of their former state employees. So, uh, and also I think that uh, it would be beneficial for them to know that, uh, hey, these people are professionals, even though they're retired now, they're still there, they're still working, they're still supporting the state. Consequently, it's important that uh, they be cognizant of what our needs are and so those are the three concerns that I have that we might be thinking about for uh, follow-up meetings. I don't hear you, Dan. You're, you're turned off. There, I found the unmute button. <laughs> <laughs> I've got so many screens open here and they're overlapping. Can you all see the screen? I've got screen sharing on. Oh, I see. I got to hit the share button. I don't think y'all seeing the treasurer's report screen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Good. I, I did that much right. Uh, I had I had about to skip over Ann on the treasurer's report. I got so excited that our election went smoothly and we had a candidate for everything. <laughs> <laughs> but those were good comments by Ted, and I'm glad we uh, we gave him an opportunity to speak to that. And those are certainly things that we will be uh, looking into and being mindful of as we go forward. Now, with our treasurer's report and some other good, useful information, Ann Bishop. Um, Dan, if you can relinquish the, the screen to me, I can put up the treasurer's report. Okay, let me see if I can figure out how to do that. <laughs> I have lost my Zoom screen. Well, I can just tell you while while you're while you're doing that. But the treasure report is from March 2020 to August 2020. So it covers two meeting dates since we didn't have a June meeting. We had a beginning balance of $2,513.92. We did receive uh, a check from TPEA. And uh, we also had expenses of, uh, from the March meeting. So we had deposits of $2,205.42 and that included the dividend or the rebate from TPA of $2,204. We had expenses of $1,594.04 which includes the $1,000 TPA chapter 149 donated for the benefit of the impact uh, mailing and I have the screen now so I can yes you do put it up uh, so for a total uh, ending balance we have three thousand one hundred and twenty five dollars and thirty cents 
Okay, that sounds good. Any questions for Ann? And I've emailed this to Linda for the minutes. Thank you very okay. much. We will Thank follow you, that. Uh -huh. Now, I think you want to talk about something else that's important. Well, I, I just wanted to remind you that uh, one, we need to swear in the officers. But we <laughs> Thank you very much. Not all the officers. <laughs> yeah. And I'll stop sharing here. But um, if you want me to do that right now, I'll do it. Yes, please do. Uh, okay. We are going to have, we're going to assume we can't see everybody. Some of them is not even here. Jim's not here. Uh, Julia, we're not getting any video from. Ray, are we seeing, seeing Ray Hamel's video? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Ray, See, it's you, under Charlotte. <laughs> I'm coming up under Charlotte. <laughs> Boy, I don't know if that means if you hold your hand up and swear that she gets the office or not. That's anyway, whether we well, can see you and, folks. Uh, and Julia did uh, type in her so she can always respond through the chat. Very good. Okay, okay. go ahead, Ann. As elected officers for Chapter 149 of the Texas Public Employees Association, you have received the highest honor your colleagues can bestow upon you. Your ideals and standards of those association you represent are exceptional. In our association, it is your responsibility to see that those ideals and standards are maintained. Will you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear to uphold and administer the offices to which you have been elected in conformity with the bylaws of the Texas Public Employees Association and will you in every manner possible promote and safeguard the purpose of your association and the welfare of its membership. Well, I hereby declare you the duly elected and installed officers of TPA chapter 149 for the year 2020 to 2021. My warmest congratulations to each of you. Um, so that was the swearing in. The other, it, the other item I was just gonna follow up with Ray's report on uh, a couple of items. One is that anybody who wants to submit a letter, and I know that Ray was talking to Ted earlier, to the House Appropriations Committee uh, for the joint charge between House Appropriations Committee and Pensions and Investments Committee. If you will let us know, we will help you write a letter and um, drafted and give you the contact information for that. Uh, Carol Fox, one of our new board members, as well as a retiree, is going to submit a letter uh, on his behalf uh, to the House Appropriations Committee. So we look forward to having at least two, if not more, submissions supporting ERS and their, their mission. Uh, the other item is that we will be updating our website. We have uh, a couple of projects underway that um, will make it a little bit easier to navigate the current site as well as get uh, up and running a new site. But we don't have a launch date for the new site yet, but uh, we're going to try to just update the current site and then launch a new site in the near future. Last but not least, I wanted to give a shout out to our strategic planning committee. We have a strategic planning committee that has worked uh, continuously since August to develop a strategic plan. And if you're interested in participating in that committee, please let us know. There's always more room for participants. Uh, and even if you don't want to talk during the meeting, you can at least get the emails. So we will be continuing our strategic planning over the next couple of months. And I wanted to thank the committee as well as the chairs. We have Joe Golson and Eddie Reyes as our chairs and they're doing an outstanding, co-chairs, and they're doing an outstanding job. Thank you. And thank you, Ann. Dan, may I have to make one, one note? Absolutely. Also, yes, sir. Uh, if one of, to address one of Ted's uh, points, uh, Anna has texted 
I mean, has chat, entered in chat that uh, the TPA website will indeed include all the information about AMBA that was presented today and will be included in the next newsletter. Ann, did you want to talk a little bit about the auction which closes tonight? Oh, yes, thank you. Um, the impact auction is online and you should have received an email with the link. And if you didn't, you're welcome to copy this one and paste it, but it's www.32auctions.com backslash impact 2020. <coughs> Excuse me, and it closes tonight. We do have a number of items. We have 18 items on there that are available for bidding, including, as John said earlier, the two MASA insurance policy, well, they're not insurance, but the two MASA reimbursement policies that are an extremely good deal, uh, as well as some gift cards, some hotel stays, barbecue, tools, um, a pet portrait, and some koozies that were donated by Gina and the pet portrait by Hannah. So please take a look at it and bid on that. That is our fundraiser that we are holding virtually in lieu of the auction, the silent auction that usually occurs at the annual meeting, but it will close tonight. So hopefully you get a chance to bid. Uh, once you sign up for the auction, you have to get approval from us to be able to bid. And the reason for that is that law, the state law requires that only members can bid or contribute to a political action committee. So we have to make sure that you are a member of TPA in order to bid. So when you sign up, uh, you'll send us an, it will send us an email automatically and we will right away put you into the auction and you can bid. So we have a lot of room for uh, opportunity there to raise some money. And the Barry, go ahead, Ted. Auction again is? Tonight at midnight or 1140, 1159 p.m. So we get busy if we want to get on it. Correct. Yeah, very worthwhile cause there. And a little cumbersome to get in because of the whole sign-in process. It seems like you have to sign in two or three times in two or three different places. Uh, but it's well worth the effort, and we would appreciate you making the effort. There's there's actually some bargains on there. I probably shouldn't be saying this because I'll miss some of the ones I'm uh, signed <laughs> up for. But uh, that being the case, we're all going to impact or all going to benefit impact hopefully so that's that's worthwhile okay now i think we can move to unfinished business the only item of which i have is our christmas luncheon which i mentioned to you earlier we didn't want to make up our minds and say whether to definitely go with it or not at this point until we see where the virus is going to lead us come december so uh, we were thinking, again, as I mentioned earlier, that maybe we would wait till early November, get the general election out of the way, but do this before Veterans Day, which will be exactly one month before the December 11th date that we would be have, uh, that we would be having the, uh, the uh, Christmas meeting. Uh, any discussion on that? If not, then that is uh, how we will proceed. I will get together with the executive committee here and uh, via email and discuss that as we get closer to that date. And of course, we'll put out information to the rest of the chapter to let you know how that's going to go. I suppose there is even the possibility that we could meet again online in December. But again, more information on that coming up after a while. Well, now we're to that point where I've been telling you all along that we needed to have our names uh, registered for to f draw these two gift certificates. I've got 14 names that I've listed. Uh, 
Linda, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Would you pick a number between 1 and 14? Uh, 12. Number 12 is Kathleen Bryan. She will win our Amazon.com gift card, which is being provided to us by AMBA this morning. And uh, let's see, Ted, can you hear me? I uh, can hear you. Would you pick a number between 1 and 14 that isn't 12? No. Uh, 9? Hey, that's Linda Schmeltkoff. <laughs> so she will win our $25 Visa debit card coming to us from the Greater Texas Federal Credit Union. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Who won the first one? Kathleen Bryan. We might, uh, Kathleen. No, uh, I was on mute. It's for Cantrell Bryan. He's the member. I'm the wife. And okay, I we're gonna we're Thank gonna you. we're probably gonna need an. No, I guess I guess Amber will get that to you by via email. We have your it's email. Cantrell Bryan. He's the retiree. Okay, tell me his first name. Cantrell. Spell it. C-A-N-T-R-E-L-L. -E -L -L. Me. Brian. C -E, otherwise, C period, E period, Brian, B-R-Y-A-N in New Braunfels. B-R-Y-A-N? Yes. B-R-Y-A-N. Correct. Oh, right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. He called me C-E. <laughs> uh -huh. Is there anything else we need to discuss? If not, I will thank you once again for participating. This is very heartening to me to have so many people able to participate and uh, come on board with us today. And thank once again the folks at AMBA for providing us the platform. Dan. And, yes. Okay. I've got on oh, my screen showing 20, at different times, 23 to 28 participants, but I don't have near that number of names. Can we talk and try to resolve some of them? Or add some? I think we can I, do a screenshot. Yeah. And send it to you. Well, I'm, I'm recording this whole thing, so I think I've got that in the recording. Matter of fact, right now I am scrolling through all of them so that they will be in the recording and we'll we'll pull them out of that uh and i'll send that to you before you put the minutes together or maybe some after you put left, the minutes together yeah, some people I, left early yeah yeah I, I, I my screen didn't show up maybe 12 people and i don't know who is john and carolyn max who what's your last name john that's McAllister. M C C. Yeah, it's M C C O L L I S T E R, I and I'm the retiree, John. Oh, John. Okay, John. Okay, thank you. I have. I see your name. <laughs> well, thank you, Linda, for all the due diligence of getting. <laughs> we are all adapting to a new format here, and I. I apologize for juggling things there towards the end john had john from amba had to ring off and and he left the slides <laughs> up to me to be presenting and i, I kind of bumbled that a little bit but i'm learning thank you once again and with that we adjourn the meeting thank you thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you great meeting yeah. uh, good job dan thank, thank you very you. much